Today we're going to be doing an oil change on a 5.7 liter Vortec V8. It's an 98 Chevy Silverado. Uh, the tools you'll need is a pan to catch the oil. I believe a 15 millimeter wrench to undo the oil pan bolt and an oil filter. But for now, let's crawl under here and take this thing out. Okay, we're under the truck now. And changing the oil pretty much involves removing two things. The oil pan bolt and the oil filter. Ours is conveniently located next to each other here. I'll uh, take my 15 millimeter ratchet here, uh, I mean wrench, and I did break it loose because uh, the previous owner had put it in too tight. It really only needs to be a little snug. Um, turning it push in, that keeps the oil from leaking out right away. Uh, the engine has been warmed, so all the contaminants hopefully are still in the oil. And then as you reach the end of the threads, just pull it out. Now once you've got the oil drain out some, your wrench, which actually fits over the end of the filter, or you take an oil filter wrench similar to this one. However, since I've never really dealt with an oil filter this big before, I don't have the right tools for it. Filters are only supposed to be on finger tight, or hand tight, or actually about a quarter to a half turn after making contact. So if it's done correctly, I should be able to turn this puppy off by hand. It looks like I'm gonna be able to. <clears throat> That's why Fram often puts rubber gimmicky things on the bottom of their filters. Some other, I think Mobile One or K&N uses a nut for a socket, which is great, but in this case here, we're the strong arm it. And it's gonna come off for us, so that's good. At least we can get it off, and then I'll get the proper wrench to make sure that when we do put one on, a new one on, uh, it'll be torqued correctly. And we're gonna let that drip all over the place too. Once that stops dripping, we'll just let it go and let it fall into the pan. Next, we're going to come in with a rag and clean out where the oil filter mounts to make sure that that's nice and clean. Okay, so we're up here on the deck. Here is my oil plug, and it has a magnet on it, and you can see there's not too much on there. And that's good. Uh, it's just a little indicator of what's going on, some little bits and stuff. Since I wasn't the one who cleaned it before, I don't know if it's ever been cleaned, so who knows how old that stuff is. But, uh, but our plug looks good, threads are clean, which we expected, little rubber gasket's still all good, so this thing's ready to go. And then why I dug you out here is because we actually want to pre-fill our oil filter, of course. Uh, because all the time spent filling this oil filter full of oil in the truck is just time that the engine isn't getting oil. So we want to pre-fill it. So I'm going to go ahead and pour the oil in and then we're going to go back under the truck. And I'm going to try to get it in the hole. And you'll also want to put a little oil ring around the edge. This will help put it back on. It'll Go into the engine a little bit nicer and you won't rub this ring right off. Okay, so we've got everything cleaned. Now to put my drain hole back in. And it is magnetic because it wants to stick to the pan, which is neat too because it's a steel pan and it's in great shape. Make sure finger tight that in and then just cinch it up so you don't want to make it Superman tight. The threads aren't that thick on the pan too, so you don't want to uh, go too crazy with it. But you want to ensure it does have contact. And now with that tight. Okay. Next is the oil filter, which we pre-filled. And now that I'm done knocking over the camera, I'm going to manhandle my filter into position. This is a nice one because it's up and down. Sometimes they're on their side, so you got to be quick or you'll spill a lot of oil out of it. And I will attempt to turn it on. But it has now made contact, so I need it to turn at least a half a turn more. We'll see what, how we can do. We'll get it tight enough so at least we can check our oil level and test it. Maybe we can do it just fine. Well, that's three quarters of a turn after contact, so this might be fine. But usually they don't go that nice. But I really never used a filter this big either. Usually I use a AC Delco PF52 or something along those lines, which is a much narrower filter. Okay, so we've changed the, we've dumped the oil, 
change the filter. Now let's go back on top of the engine and fill this thing up. Okay, now that we're done bottom side, let's work top side here. Here's my oil fill. Comes off and there's no water underneath there. That's always good. I'm gonna put a funnel in here to give me a little help. And I'm gonna use it right out of a four and a half quart container. Uh, synthetic, conventional, your choice. They're all good. For this case, I'm just going to use a conventional until I determine how well this engine likes or dislikes oil. Some engines tend to dirty oil fast, others not. So, because this is our first oil change owning this truck, we're going to go ahead and use this stuff at first. Well, it sticks right here. We'll pull it. Wipe it off because it probably has the old oil level on it. Make sure it's nice and dry. Put it back in. Pull it out. And it says we are a little over, which we'd expect thanks to the filter. So we're going to go ahead and start it up to make sure we have oil pressure. Turn the key on, and away we go. And there she goes. We'll run it for a little bit, and we'll stop it. We'll check it again to make sure we've got enough oil in it, but that's how you change an oil in a car. This happens to be a 1998 Chevy Silverado.